Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Be Iconic this morning. Hallelujah. Good morning, Deanna. Good morning, Rudy. Hallelujah. It's good to see some of our faithful community showing up in the place this morning to receive a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. And that's what I came to give you on today. You know who it is, Pastor Terry Hicks, Senior Pastor of the Iconic Church. I am grateful to be before you this morning. Let me go ahead and get on TikTok and get my live going. I'm a little bit behind this morning. Hallelujah. But it's all good. It's all good. Hallelujah. I'm just going to type one word and I'm going to be ready to go. I pray you're ready to go this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning, I want to I want to talk about uh, a very powerful word um, in, in our lives, uh, a very powerful word that sustains us and keeps us and guides us and keeps us on track. Hallelujah. This morning, uh, I want to talk about the word faithful, uh, faithful. Great is thy faithfulness. Um, and the real question is, uh, are you able to be faithful? Are you able to be faithful with what God has given you? Um, are you able to be faithful with what God has given you? Hallelujah. Is my connection coming through okay this morning? Amen. Uh, yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay, let's go ahead and jump in. Hallelujah. Faithful. Um, are you faithful? Have you been faithful? Do you want to be faithful? Uh, the Bible says in Matthew 25 and 21, uh, his master replied, hallelujah, you can go ahead and give God glory right now over on TikTok. Make sure you share this live, follow the host over on Instagram. You can go ahead and give him glory right now because he said his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. Aren't or isn't or aren't, I don't know what, what language I'm talking in this morning. Aren't those the words that you want to hear? Um, after everything is all said and done, after you've run your race and you've done everything that you feel you're supposed to do, live your life uh, the way you feel that you should have lived it, aren't those the, the words that you want to hear? Well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things, but, but here's your shout. Because you've been faithful with a few things, <laughs> I will put you in charge of many things. Did, did, did you catch that? I'm trying to help you uh, reach that place, that plateau where God, where you walk in the authority that God has assigned for you to walk in. And, and, and I wanna tell you this morning that it's predicated on your faithfulness. Is predicated on your faithfulness. The context of this scripture is in a parable uh, by Jesus known as the parable of talents or the parable of bags or gold. And in this parable, Jesus is teaching about the importance, hallelujah, hear me, of using resources and abilities that God has given us faithfully and responsibly. I think I might be in the wrong live stream. Good morning, Monica. Let me say that again, that in this parable, Jesus is teaching about the importance of using resources and abilities that God has faithfully given us and using them faithfully and responsibly. Hallelujah. In this parable, many of the believers are entrusted with different amounts of money talents or bags of gold. The master goes away on a journey and upon his return, he settles accounts with his servants, hallelujah, to see how they manage what he gave them, hallelujah. And the servant who received five talents doubled his investment, as did the, the servant who received two talents. Both of the servants are commended by the master. They're commended by God for their faithfulness and rewarded accordingly. However, the servant who received one talent buried it in the ground out of fear and laziness. And subsequently he is rebuked by the master for what? For his lack of faithfulness. And as a result of his lack of faithfulness, his talent is taken away. This, this, this story might sound familiar to some, this parable illustrates that those who are faithful 
hallelujah, with what they've been given will be entrusted with more. Those who are faithful with what they have been given will be entrusted with more. However, the unfaithful will lose what they have. This is why it's important for you to be faithful with what God has given you because when you're faithful, it refers to you being trustworthy. When you're faithful, it refers to you being reliable and diligent and carrying out the responsibilities and the tasks that God has entrusted to you. It involves using your resources, your abilities and opportunities given to us by God, listen to this, in a manner that aligns with his will and his purpose. I need to ask you this morning, have you been faithful with what God has given you? Faithfulness entails stewardship. That means that when we're entrusted with resources by God, which include our time, our talent, our finances, our relationships, and our opportunities, it means that being faithful in these resources means using them wisely and responsibly for what? For the glory of God and the advancement of his kingdom. Just as the servants in this parable were given talents in the form of a biblical currency, hallelujah, hear me, we are given different gifts and resources by God, and it is our responsibility. Go ahead and, and, and just, just, just make that declaration over yourself. It's your responsibility. It's my responsibility to invest them wisely. Hallelujah. Many of us are looking to uh, to increase our, our, our finances by investing in the stock market and crypto and, and our 401ks and IRAs and Roth accounts. Hallelujah. But, but, but we fail to realize that God has given us talents and resources that should be invested back into the kingdom of God. How do I know? Because my Bible, my Bible says in 1 Peter 4, 10 and 11, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as a faithful steward of God's grace in its various forms. Hallelujah. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength that God provides so that in all things, hallelujah, so that in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. This is the recipe to experiencing God's glory. This is the recipe to experiencing God's faith. This is the recipe that enables us to be able to walk in faithfulness. And I need to let you know this morning, faithfulness requires diligence. It requires diligence and effort. In this parable, uh, they were they were recognized. They recognized the value of God's investment, and were using it to produce a positive outcome. They were diligent in using it to produce a positive outcome. In a similar sense, we're called to be diligent and using the resources that God has given us to make a difference in the world around us. I want to ask you this morning, do you recognize the investment that God has made on you, made in you? Hallelujah. Do you recognize that the investment that he's made in you? Proverbs 10, 4 and 5 says, lazy hands make for poverty. We're talking about diligence, but diligent hands bring wealth. He who gathers the crops is a prudent son. But he who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful son. The harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. There are few people who want to do the work. There are few people who want to be faithful with what God has given them to reach the desired result. Why? Because faithfulness requires courage. Faithfulness requires you to take risks. That the servant who buried his talent did so out of fear. He, he did so out of fear to avoid risk. However, God rebuked him for his lack of faithfulness. Faithful me faithfulness means that you're willing to step out of your comfort zone, that you're willing to take risk and you're willing to trust God to guide you. It requires courage to pursue God's purpose, even when faced with uncertainty and opposition. Hallelujah. 
but I get strength and I get comfort and I get knowledge and I get guidance and I get wisdom from God's word. He says in Joshua 1 and 9, have I not commanded you? Hallelujah. Be strong and courageous. So, so, so if, 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 if you are, are, are living in fear, if you're walking around in fear, worried and, and discouraged and anxious about the uncertainty in your life, you are not demonstrating faithfulness. You're not demonstrating faithfulness. He says, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord, discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I need to tell you this morning that faithfulness is an attitude. Yeah, I got an attitude. I have an attitude of faithfulness. I have an attitude of faithfulness. I understand that it's not just about what we do with our resources, but it's about the heart behind the action. Faithfulness is rooted in love. Faithfulness is rooted in love for God and a desire to honor him in all that we do. Hallelujah. This is how you're able to reap the benefits of the text when he says that all things work together for what? For the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. You cannot reach your purpose if you first don't operate in his purpose. And when you operate in his purpose, it requires you to be faithful. But we must not be naive when talking about faithfulness, because if we're being honest and transparent, there are some things that prevent us from being faithful. There are some things that, that have happened to you that have jeopardized your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Fear has put you in a place where you have not been faithful. Complacency has put you in a place where you have not been faithful. Selfishness and pride have put you in a place where you have not been faithful. Fear of failure or criticism have put you in a place where you have not been faithful. And if you're not careful, you allow this fear and this criticism to paralyze you and prevent you from walking in faith. I'll refer to this as faith paralysis, faith par or uh, to, to describe a condition, hallelujah, listen to this, where an individual's faith becomes stagnant, where an individual's faith becomes hindered or immobilized due to their issues. I came to tell you this morning simply that don't get caught up just because you have issues. Why? Because we all have issues. Hallelujah. The, 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 the difference is how do you deal with your issues? How do you see your issues? Hallelujah. Faithfulness signifies that we have the ability to trust God, that we take actions based on our beliefs, that we move forward in our spiritual journey based on who and what we believe. But we allow this complacency, somebody put it in my chat, please, this complacency, we allow this complacency and a lack of motivation to prevent us from fulfilling God's purpose for our life. We allow selfishness and pride uh, that they cause us to criticize our own and, and prioritize our own interest over God's purpose which subsequently hinders our willingness to serve others. He said in the text, because you've been faithful with a few things, I will put you over many things. And I came to tell you this morning succinctly that many of us want many things, but have not demonstrated our faithfulness with a few things. I know I'm talking to somebody this morning. You want more, but you're not willing to give more. You want to experience more, but you're not willing to do more. Why, Pastor Terry? Because your faith has become paralyzed. And paralyzed faith stops you from moving forward in obedience to God's calling. Paralyzed faith causes you not to step out in courage and face challenges. It causes you to doubt God's promises, to question his goodness, his goodness, his mercy, his grace, and his faithfulness. Paralyzed faith can stunt 
your spiritual growth. And when your spiritual growth has been stunted, you are prevented from fully experiencing the goodness of God's blessings. When your faith has been stunted, you, it, it hinders your ability to fulfill God's purpose in your life. I know the story of a paralyzed man in the Bible in the book of John chapter five, verses eight and nine. There's a story of a paralyzed man. And it says, then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. At one, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. I, I'm telling you that, that sometimes all you need to be faithful is an encounter with Jesus. All you need to be able to overcome your faith paralysis is one encounter with Jesus. How do I know? Because the Bible says at once the man was cured. That, that means that, that even though your faithfulness has been paralyzed, even though your faith has been paralyzed, you're, you're, you're operating in, in a way where you don't think anything is working out, nothing can work together for your good, that, that based on having an encounter with Jesus, your faith can be cured, you can be healed at once. Hallelujah. In, in this text, we read how this man had been paralyzed for years. And 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 this pool, uh, this pool in Bethesda was known for it for its healing properties. And he laid there for years because he wanted to get healed because he knew of the reputation that the pool had. The pool had a reputation for miraculous healing, but in order for him to get healed, his paralysis and competition prevented him from reaching the water, and and it left him without hope. And if we're being honest with ourselves, many of us have become desperate. Why? Because we become paralyzed by our issues. Hallelujah. We become paralyzed by our issues. But this story demonstrates the power of Jesus' compassion and his authority. Jesus approached the paralyzed man and with one simple command, he said, get up, pick up your mat and walk. Jesus demonstrated his divine power and the man was instantly healed. This is a testament and a testimony to the authority of Jesus's, Jesus Christ and the limitless, hallelujah, possibilities of faith. And I, I'm speaking on this topic this morning because many of us have become paralyzed to our issues. We struggle with our issues and we have these spiritual issues. We have emotional issues. We have relational issues that can paralyze our faith. These issues include fear, doubt, past wounds, addiction, unforgiveness. And listen, the Bible tells us succinctly that we have the ability by faith to overcome these challenges. It tells us in Romans 8 and 37, in all these things. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. That means through all your issues, through all your fear, through all your doubt, through all your past wounds, through all your trauma, through all your trials, through all your tribulations, through all your tests, through all your tragedy, through all your trauma, you are more than a conqueror for through him who loved you. Hallelujah. It says in all these things, you are more than a conqueror through him who loved you. It conveys the idea that through faith, we can overcome challenges. Through, through this idea, through faith, we can overcome issues. We can overcome trials and tests and all of these things. But when our faith has become paralyzed, we allow our issues to hinder us. We give more power to our issues than we do to God. We allow our issues to stand in the way, hear me, of what God has for us. And our, our focus on our issues overshadow our faith, which thus hinders our transformation. And we know that transformation, hallelujah, is not a one-time occurrence, but transformation is a continual process. And because we live in this world, we have to be careful not to conform to this world. Why? Because my Bible says so. It says in Romans 12 and 2, not to conform to the pattern of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I want to tell you this morning that it is in your mind where you lose faithfulness. Why? Because faith paralysis 
is a neurological disorder. That means that it lives in your mind. It, it lives in your mind. And, and, and here's the thing, your doctor may not understand, your PCP may not understand, your neurologist may not understand, hallelujah. But I know a doctor, <laughs> I know a doctor who understands your diagnosis. He understands your diagnosis. As a matter of fact, he's not just any ordinary doctor, he's a specialist. Uh, many times when we have a special issue or a special problem or we have a sickness that no one can, no one else can, can, can tend to, we go to a specialist. Hallelujah. And, and, and many of you know, I'm in my doctoral program right now. I'm not a doctor yet, but today I'm going to act as your PCP and I'm going to write you a referral. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to write you a referral to see a specialist. <laughs> Hallelujah. You've been trying to figure out how to overcome your faith paralysis. You've been trying to figure out how to overcome your issues. I want you to go to a specialist. Why? Because he has extensive training. He has extensive knowledge, hallelujah, in the area called faith. Hallelujah. He has a track record, hallelujah, of performing miracles. He has a track record of performing signs. He has a track record of performing wonders. Hallelujah. There was another man in the Bible hallelujah, who had been paralyzed. And, and see, the difference between this man and, and the man at the pool of Bethesda was that this man, hallelujah, has some people with him. He, he surrounded himself by some people. You can find this story in Mark 2, 1 through 12. There, there were four friends, hallelujah, who brought a paralyzed man to Jesus. But, but here's the thing. There were so many people. Remember, I told you he was a specialist. That means that sometimes you can't get in to see a specialist when you really need to see the specialist. Why? Because he's all booked up. He's all booked up. And in this text in Mark 2, uh, 1 through 12, uh, Jesus was, was booked up. He, he had a waiting. The waiting room was filled, hallelujah, with patients who wanted to get healed. The waiting room was filled with patients who wanted to get set free and delivered. Why? Because their faith was paralyzed. But there were four friends, hallelujah, who brought their paralyzed friend to see the specialist. Hallelujah. And because the waiting room was so crowded, hallelujah, they grabbed a ladder. I don't really know how they got up on the roof, but they, they, they got to the roof. Hallelujah. They opened the hole in the roof. Hallelujah. And they lowered the man through the roof. Hallelujah. And, and, and watch this. Jesus forgave his sins, <laughs> healed his paralysis, and allowed him to walk. I want to tell you this morning, this is why it's important that you surround yourself with the right people, because sometimes you experience faith paralysis and you can't pray your way out of it. Sometimes you experience faith paralysis and you can't see your way out of it. Hallelujah. And God will send you people who will carry you to Jesus. I want to let you know this morning that God can help us overcome our faith paralysis. He can help us overcome our issues by transforming our thinking and our attitude. Remember, faithfulness is an attitude and we need to have an attitude of walking by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. We have to walk by faith and not by sight. That means that we must rely on our faith and our Christian walk rather than solely on what we can see or understand with our physical senses. That means that we have to be able to trust God even though we can't see God. It encourages us to trust in God's promises. It encourages us to trust in God's guidance even when circumstances appear bleak even when circumstances seem challenging or uncertain. It's the reality that, that we live in. And many of us live in this reality where we can see our issues, but not our faith. We can see our issues clearly and they seem intangible and overwhelming. Hallelujah. Faith, on the other hand, may feel intangible and elusive, but it is the key to overcoming our challenges. Hallelujah. Faith is defined simply as the confidence, hallelujah, of what we hope for and the evidence of what we cannot see. It means that we trust in God's promises even when circumstances seem impossible. Hallelujah. 
when Jesus told the paralyzed man to take your mat and walk, he was instructing him not to focus on his issue. <laughs> focus on me. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you this morning not to focus your issue, but focus on Jesus. He says, focus on me and not your issues. He calls us to leave our issues behind and follow him in faith. Trust that he will lead us through. Hallelujah. And this morning, I want to write a prescription, hallelujah, so that you can medicate. Hallelujah. I didn't say meditate, so that you can medicate on his word. Why? Because we get healed through medication. Hallelujah. And this prescription is necessary for the continuity of your care. For individuals with chronic conditions, they are receiving ongoing management by the specialist. They're receiving ongoing management by the specialist. And I need to let you this morning that your life requires ongoing management by the specialist. There's some things that he can do that you can't do. Hallelujah. And I want to encourage you this morning. Hallelujah, to walk in faith, to live in faith, to walk by faith. Hallelujah, to use the gifts that God has given you to be faithful stewards of God's grace, to be faithful steward of his peace, to be faithful steward of his mercy, to be faithful stewards of his forgiveness. Hallelujah, and being faithful with the resources that he's given us opens us up to receiving more than we could ever ask for. Hallelujah, because he said, if you can be faithful with a few things, hallelujah, I'll put you over many things. Hallelujah, and many of us, hallelujah, want many things, but we're not willing to be faithful with a few things. I want to beseech you this morning, dear brethren, that God wants more for you. He wants more for you, but in order for you to receive more, in order for you to do more, in order for you to experience more, it requires more faith. It requires more trust. It requires more honor. It requires more reverence. It requires an unwavering level of faith and conviction that God is who he says he is. Hallelujah. And that he can do what he says he can do. Hallelujah. Many of us are living our life in, for, 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 to, for a purpose, right? For some of us, it's God's purpose. For some of us, it's our purpose. But I want to tell you this morning that, that your purpose is truly fulfilled by your faithfulness. That, 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 that executing your faithfulness is the ultimate sometimes sacrifice in order to experience life in a way that God wants you to experience it. Because for many of us, we want to experience life how we want to experience it, but we're not really, we're, we're not really willing to be faithful to what God says, to, 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 to how God says we should live. Hallelujah. And many of us have made this powerful declaration that 2024 is going to be one of the best years of our life, most potent, most powerful, prolific. We've said that it's going to be our due season, the season where we receive rightfully what belongs to us. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you this morning, I am a living testimony that God will do what he says that he will do. Hallelujah. That in this season of my life, I've never been more faithful. Hallelujah. And I don't have much. Hallelujah. But God has given me more. Why? Because I understand the context of this text. Hallelujah, the context of this text is Jesus talking, is God talking, and he says, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I will put you in charge of many things. This is how I'm able to do what I do because of my faithfulness with a few things. Again, I don't have much, but I believe that I'm in a season, this due season, where God is going to do more based on my faithfulness. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you this morning that, that, that in this season, God needs you to be faithful. But more than God needing you to be faithful, in this season, you need to be faithful. You need to be faithful with the few things that God has given you. Why? Because if you're not faithful with the few things that God has given you, then subsequently, you could lose what God has given you. 
I know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking to you from authority. I'm talking to you from experience. Hallelujah. That means that there have been times and moments in my life, hear me, when I haven't been faithful, when I thought I had a lot. <laughs> and by worldly and material standards, I did have a lot. Hallelujah. But I need to tell you this morning, I lost what I had because I wasn't faithful with what God has given me. I, I, that's why I feel equipped and prepared to be able to encourage you this morning to be faithful with what God has given you. Be faithful with the gifts that God has given you. Why? Every good and perfect gift comes from God. Hallelujah. Be faithful with what he's given you because if you're faithful with what he's given you, he's going to put you in charge than more than more put you in charge of more than what you have. Hallelujah. And this is not prosperity gospel. This is, I'm not saying be faithful so, so you can be rich. I'm not saying be faithful so you can get that new Mercedes. I'm not saying be faithful so you can get that dream home. I'm saying be faithful because God is faithful. Hallelujah. I'm saying be faithful because it's a part of your responsibility. It's your reasonable service. Hallelujah. He's faithful to you. How in the world could you not be faithful to him? Hallelujah. And out of your faithfulness, out of your faithfulness, you're going to see more. Out of your faithfulness, you're going to do more. Out of your faithfulness, you're going to experience more. Out of your faithfulness, all things, hallelujah, are going to work together for your good. Why? Because you've been faithful. You've been demonstrated, you've demonstrated your love for God. You've demonstrated your reverence for God. You've demonstrated your respect and your uh, the for the authority of God. Hallelujah. And I want to pray this morning. I want to pray this morning as I close. I want to pray this morning for your faithfulness. Hallelujah. I want to pray this morning for your faithfulness. Good morning, uh, cuz. Thank you for being on. I know you're at work. That's okay. That's okay. I want to pray for your faithfulness. God, we come to you this morning, God, humbly seeking your knowledge, your wisdom, and your guidance. Uh, God, in this transformative journey we call life. Uh, God, we pray right now, God, that we would allow our faith to be the foundation of who we are the very fiber and fabric of our being. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And your word sustains us. Your word keeps us. Your word heals us. Your word sets us free. Your word restores us. Your word delivers us. Your word reconciles us. God, and we need to be reconciled back to you. We, we need to be reconciled back to you so that we can begin to operate in faith that we can begin to operate by faith. Hallelujah, God. And we rebuke, hallelujah, everything that presents itself against the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. And we make it obedient to Christ. God, we demolish every stronghold that has been established to deter us from being faithful. Hallelujah. Every situation and every circumstance and every issue that has come up in our lives to paralyze our faith. We rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We declare right now, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Hallelujah. We declare right now, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Hallelujah. We declare right now that by faith, we are who you say we are. Hallelujah. Not who the world says we are. Hallelujah. And that we would take this life, this journey seriously, that we would operate in the ways and the mannerism and the characteristics that you called us to operate, that we would be faithful servants. Why? Because when we're faithful servants, we've demonstrated our faith. We've demonstrated that we can be faithful with a few things. And because we've been faithful with a few things, you'll put us in charge of many things. Hallelujah. I'm declaring many things over the lives of the people that are under the sound of my voice right now in the name of Jesus. I'm declaring many things. Hallelujah. But this declaration of many things cannot be fulfilled without faithfulness, cannot be fulfilled without trust cannot be fulfilled without an unwavering level of hope and confidence in you, God. God, so we thank you this morning. God, we thank you this morning, hallelujah, for many things. We thank you this morning for many things. Why? Because many things is indicative of our faithfulness. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, God, that we're able to be good stewards with what you've given us. And understand this, that good stewards don't just give 
uh, money. Good stewards give talent. Good stewards give time. Good stewards give resources. Good stewards give love. Good stewards give compassion. Good stewards give kindness. Good stewards give peace. Good stewards give so many things that are not, not financial, but are, are part of the characteristics of who you made us to be. Hallelujah. And it's through these gifts, hallelujah, that you want us to be good stewards of so that we can hear those beautiful words, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. You've been faithful over a few things. Hallelujah. I will put you in charge of many things. God, we thank you this morning for this word. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. Hallelujah. It's in the matchless, omnipotent, marvelous, majestic name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, that we pray. And the church said, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to thank everyone for being on with, with me this morning. Hallelujah. I'm a little tongue-tied and a little tired, but I'm obedient. <laughs> I'm, I'm obedient even when I'm tired, even when I don't feel like I have the power or the strength. I get on here and do this. Why? Because this is a demonstration of my faithfulness. This is a demonstration of my faithfulness. Hallelujah. Great is thy faithfulness. I believe that, that, that I have to do this because I believe that it's not just about me but it's about someone who needs a word. Hallelujah. Someone might be discouraged. They might be having issues in their family and their marriage and their relationships. They might be having issues on their job. They might have lost a loved one like I just lost my sister. Hallelujah. And sometimes they just need encouragement. Hallelujah. And despite my shortcomings, despite me being fickle, despite me being tired, despite saying I, I don't feel like I can do it today, I understand that my faithfulness requires sacrifice. And I want to remind you this morning, hallelujah, that your faithfulness requires you to sacrifice. It requires you to do some things that you may not feel like doing, some things that you don't even want to do. But out of your faithfulness, hallelujah, you will find that God will, will reward you with more than you could ever ask for. Why? Because he's a God of abundance. He's a God of abundance. His son said he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And in this abundant life, we must demonstrate our faithfulness. We must demonstrate our trust. We must demonstrate that we're willing to rely on Jesus, that we're willing to depend on Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So I pray that you've been blessed. I want to ask you all to be in prayer for me and Lady Joyce as we travel um, to my sister's uh, memorial service later this week. And so on Thursday, I may not be on because I may be traveling uh, back for her memorial service, but I want you all to keep me in prayer, uh, keep my family in prayer as we memorialize the life of my beautiful, amazing sister, Benita Austin. Um, hallelujah. I am grateful for the life that she lived. I'm grateful for the service that she gave. I'm grateful for the love that she gave, hallelujah. And I'm even more grateful that she is resting in the loving arms of our heavenly father, hallelujah. I don't believe that there's a better place to be, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. And at the end of the day, I'm trying to get where she's at. I wanna go where she went to. She went on the ultimate vacation. She's supposed to go on vacation with us next month, but yet she decided to go on a different vacation, hallelujah. And while I admit in my transparency, I'm not ready to go on that vacation, um, yet, because I feel like God still has more work for me to do, I, I will say this. When I go on that heavenly vacation, I do want to hear those beautiful words, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Hallelujah. I pray that you were blessed. Hallelujah. Exceedingly abundantly above all you could hope, ask, wish, or imagine. Hallelujah. You know what I say as I depart. Whomever God favors, the kingdom features and the enemy fights. Be iconic. Peace. <laughs>